This week is actually 20 years to the week when WWF bought WCW. They bought them on March 23rd, 2001. We're recording this on March 24th. Um, I just wanted to say, I, I'm trying to think of like a fresh question or a different way to approach the topic that's been covered ad nauseum. But like when you knew that WWF were buying WCW, the TV deal had fallen through and all that kind of stuff in 2001, did you, th compared to what the invasion was and what ended up happening, did you have more uh, optimism about what was going to happen or did it pretty much play out the way that you anticipated? Um, I don't know really what I thought at the time. I know I was concerned. I mean, we knew WCW was in trouble. WWF had attempted to buy the company in late 2000, I think it was, and talks broke down pretty quickly. Then, as we know, Eric Bischoff and Fusion were going to buy the company, but then the TV uh, deals were not part of the agreement, and therefore WCW was essentially worthless to Bischoff and Fusion because without a TV station, uh, TV partner on which to broadcast this, you know, renew this revitalized version of WCW, they had no promotion. And that was when Vince stepped in and bought it. Well, you know, it went for a song, didn't it? What was it? I can't remember the exact amount of money. It was less than $5 million they bought it for. Um, very it was like 3.5 million, I think. 3.5, that does ring a bell, yeah. Yeah, that does ring a bell, that number. So at that point, I mean, there was, there was some optimism in some circles that they were gonna bring WCW back and they were gonna relaunch it under the WWF banner somehow. But from the very beginning, I wasn't quite sure how they were gonna pull this off. Um, and Raw, the Monday night slot, was gonna become Nitro, wasn't it? That was the plan. Um, Shane McMahon was in charge. He was the one in the storyline who had bought the company from under his father's nose on the very last episode of Nitro. You know, and storyline wise, it seemed to be set up quite well, but the practicalities of bringing WCW back with a McMahon in charge seemed to be self-defeating to me because do people watch WCW because it wasn't WWF. That's why they watched it because they wanted a different flavor of pro wrestling. This was something Vince Russo never grasped when he went there in October 1999. The WCW fans didn't want a version of WWF wrestling on WCW programming. This was something Russo never grasped in his entire time there. So when McMahon was presented, Shane McMahon was presented as the person who was going to run WWF, from the off, Kenny, I was, I was concerned because I thought, well, how is this going to work? How is this going to attract former WCW fans? They're just going to say, well, it's going to be another version of the WWF. So well, also, I guess if you if you even look at like the, the the TV partners, you know, if you go to USA Network and you go, by the way, we're not giving you Monday Night Raw anymore. We're going to give you WCW Nitro. They yeah. or, or or same with uh, UPM with with SmackDown. It's like it was it would be very difficult to kind of go. We're not giving you this like Premier League football team anymore. We're giving you like a Division Three like. Yeah. But you want me to pay the same money for that? Like, I, I, I mean, JR actually talked on his podcast recently about, you know, what they should have done was they should have said to USA Network or whatever, so look, you know, we are going to change it to WCW Nitro. That is what's going to be. But just so you know, the top guy in that brand is going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin. And that's who it's going to be. Because at least then you could have guaranteed them, you know, the big, the big name that they wanted or whatever. But instead, it was just, they just couldn't figure it out. They couldn't figure out how they were going to do it. And then was there not a plan they were then going to do a Saturday night TV show? That was the what they were trying to get so that WCW would have its own show separate from Raw and SmackDown. Well, I mean, that's what they should have done from the start of. He's just, he's just taken one of their weekend warrior shows and made that the WCW show until it was established. And once it had been a proven, proven ratings grabber, then you go back to the station and you say, listen, this is drawing bigger numbers than metal or heat or whatever it was that was that was on in that slot was doing. And we think that if you put it on in prime time or a you know 10 p.m. slot or whatever weeknights, then we'll be able to get two or three million viewers or possibly four million viewers. 